What's up everybody, Corey here for CCDG, back with part two of round one, and I am joined once again by the man of legend, Mr. Dollar Bills, Matt Dollar. Ah, uh, Corey, it's great to be here <laughs> back in the woods in Georgia. Oh man, I can't get enough of this course. I just said it off mic, but it's just so beautiful, and watching these guys throw these awesome lines, just such a joy. Uh, hole 10, first of our back nine coverage, par four, 606 feet. Definitely a super unique line. Um, reminiscent to the last hole we played where it's almost that reverse par four where you're definitely thinking mid-range or at least something um, you know, in the middle of the fairway off the tee. Yeah, it really all depends on how aggressive you want to be. Zag mm -hmm. being a lefty, we're going to see him be pretty aggressive, I think. Yeah, he's definitely lining up the driver here. For a right-handed player, the backhand hyzer flip on this is kind of a tough play. Like It is the play to get you in the best position, mm -hmm. like down where Zach is at. But the thing is, is it's really tough. So you're going to see a lot of right-handers that have a forehand use that, like Macbeth. I, I like it. This is what I don't like, though. Yeah. Oh, okay. It did. It, it he, got, he got a little lucky there. Um, they Usually the righty sidearms will finish off in the woods mm -hmm. if you don't go to the left of that tree in the fairway out yes. there. You really got to hang it out wide. Yeah, for, for maximum distance, guys are trying to go inside that. But that's going to put them off the fairway for the forehand. Oh, my God. God. Yeah, that's a Dave Felberg. I am a world champion shot. Yes, that is serious. That thing took that right hand turn and just kept going. And this is the exact opposite play. MJ just comments up the middle. Yeah, that's the the comment up the middle is uh, I like that play a lot. The thing is, is a few years back they pushed this basket back further than it used to be uh. to make this second shot a lot harder, and so. It's really, really hard to get the birdie if you lay up that short. Yes. However, it is a tunnel shot, and MJ is the best, so he just went tunnel, tunnel. Yeah, he's fine with that. He's like, oh, straight shot? Easy. Yeah, he'll still have some kind of birdie look with that. Um, Macbeth, he's really lucky to not be off in that right side, so he was able to advance. This yeah. is one of the few holes where if you get off, it's hard to advance. Yes, I was just going to say that. I mean, even the ability to throw that shot to give himself the 50-foot birdie is a, is a plus. Uh, Zach is going to find himself left side of those trees, going to have a pretty tricky putt. Oh, Dave, after that perfect drive. Yeah, I'm feeling feeling it yeah. for Dave on that one. That's the thing is, like, he threw that drive so far, but there's still just scattered trees. The fairway doesn't feel super clear on yes. the second shot. Yes. Oh, wow. That was a great bid through a mail slot. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that would have been such a fun make. Just kind of flinging it up there. Yeah, like I said, once they push this pin back, it uh, really reduced the birdie count on this one. And MJ is not going to add to that birdie count. No. That's unfortunate. He was right at circle's edge. Yep. And he just said, no, nah, pulled it. This happens when you pull it. Yeah, he's not too worried about it. But uh, at the end of our last video, he had some troubles on hole nine. So hopefully MJ can pull this back together. Yeah. I mean, I, I know he's from Charlotte, but I have to imagine – he's feeling at home at this course. So I don't know if there's like, you know, every hole he steps up to, I have to imagine he's sinking birdie, right? So yeah, definitely. Most he, of them at least. I mean, he's going to try and throw his tee shot into a position that's going to get him a chance at birdie with the exception of that one long par three on the front. This is very true. Uh, there we have it. Series of fours. Um, you know, not all pars are created equally though. Dave with a ridiculous drive and MJ with the comment all yeah. kind of netting the same result. Yeah, that was kind of a crazy way for them all to get bars <laughs> yeah, on that hole. Yeah. Here's another new hole. Yes. Hole 11. Hole 11. 20 feet. I'm glad that you just said that because I kind of like this one. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it wants to play as a sidearm, but I do feel like it's almost better as a backhand hole. All right. It's kind of an ugly hole right now. Yes. But I think this is the maybe the best of the new holes. I, I think five is the best of the new holes. Oh yeah, five's a good one. It's just cool and nasty and tight, and it fits W.R. Jackson. But this one, I, I'm on board. I, I actually do like this one. This is way more accessible than hole five. Yes. Um, but you're going to want to get birdies on this. Even it, though this is a hole. long hole, mm -hmm. you, you have to get the birdie. The, the line is super interesting to get it. To get the action, you got to hang it really out wide because there's trees and shrubs like Dave just found short. But it has to, like spike back in on that backhand line it's it's a funky angle to get it in on it's super deceptive because mm -hmm. you can't see the pin over there so it makes you think it's so far to the right but you can see these trees out there straight that mj mj's left of the trees i'm talking about but if you throw to those trees straight away you yeah. have a look 25 at the pin. foot 30 foot yeah maybe like, just yeah. outside the circle yeah. looking and that's really the way to play this hole i think over time that's the way people are going to start to play yeah it. almost almost like a net straight shot 
Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You see everybody throwing these hard Anheuser shots where I think what they really want to do is have a little bit of late turn mm-hmm. or finish straight. I, I totally agree. See, now everybody who, you know, they tell, well, that's probably less than ideal shot from Dave there, but everybody with this, this like 90 foot, 100 foot approaches, it's just, there's not a lot of <clears throat> into the, into the uh, circle there. Yeah, Felberg is definitely struggling with that injury a little bit. Yes. You can tell that he's able to generate those like tee shots when he's uh, getting his whole body Full moving patty. into it. Yep. But yeah, those touch shots are definitely coming out weird for Dave today. Solid putt, though. Yeah, he was like, I'd love to see anybody out here my age with a bulging disc in their back break par on this course, okay? <laughs> Guys, like, I can shoot 1,000 already with a broken neck. <laughs> yeah. No big deal. Yeah, exactly. If MJ had a broken neck, you'd never even know. He'd still no. be smiling and shrugging oh, yeah. his shoulders. <laughs> I don't think it's possible for him to break anything. I think his body is made of elastic, though. That's the difference. <laughs> Gumby MJ. <and> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> These guys just cleaning up their pars. Nothing to see here. Now Pretty... I really want a Gumby, uh, Gumby MJ keychain oh, for my bag. Oh, my God. That would be dope. All right. PR, Discraft. We need it. <laughs> elastic MJ figurines. Maybe even a wizard Gumby MJ keychain. Whoa, with flappable beard. I like it. <laughs> par five, 990 foot. This is the first of the par fives and really like the eagle hole. Um, not to say it's easy, but it's there if you put it together. The par fives on this course are the number one feature in my opinion. All three par mm-hmm. fives are awesome holes and we did see this eagle by Will Schustrick back in the day. It was gross. He threw a drive further than I've ever seen anyone throw it and then threw a rock down, are that, you, down the down straight the gap? Left, the left the straight gap, yep. Oh my gosh. And so so you just described it. That is the, the stroke for the eagle, right? Ripping Absolutely. a drive all the way down there and then something straight down the left side. Exactly. Uh, if you are going to play for birdie or if you get out of position on the drive, the right gap is way bigger and more open but is a lot more real estate to get all the way around to the basket yeah the thing is is it's hard to get into the right gap but once you're there it's way easier to get to the pin yes if you have to play into the earlier left gap which is a straight look at the pin it is way harder and way more punishing no question uh this hole does play over par that's Um, surprising it does i know 5.15 average um you know and, and actually, I was just going to say, granted, there are some lower rated players in the field, but this field in particular is really strong and it's not that huge. It's like, what, <laughs> 65 people or something like that? So it's a traditional IDGC bloodbath. Exactly. You're going to have to average, you know, 10, 15 to cash. No, no question. And it's, that happens here a lot. It, it seems like a lot of the traveling players don't want to come play in the hardwoods. No. Which is surprising when there were that many of them at USDGC last week, only a couple hours from here. No I question. thought we'd have a bigger field. I, I think you're probably... Well, but I mean, in general, of the top 50 guys, you probably have 40 of them. Yeah. Well, we lost a few of the really good ones that tried to sign up uh, later and weren't led in the tournament. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw one of those people caddying on a card in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> Big yeah. Germ not quite getting into the tournament. Right, yeah. It was disappointing because Big Germ is always a uh, contender here. Yeah. He's got the he's got all the shots for this course. And, and we are seeing these guys uh, throw their second shots in this par five, but funny little anecdote. Uh, Sexton, uh, Big Germ tried to ask Sexton to text Mike Downs, PDGA official, to get him into the tournament. Um, and the last time Nate had, and I, I'm pretty sure it's Nate, last time Nate had texted Mike was a year to the day. Trying to get Germ into last year's tournament. That is hilarious. <laughs> so it's in character, at least. MJ turning over that second shot into the bush line. Can't quite find himself in good footing yet on this hole. You know, and you can have those days on courses like this where you're not throwing terrible shots. You're not even throwing bad shots, but somehow you never have a good lie. I, exactly. It's like they're coming out nice. They're just a foot to the right, a foot to the left. Zach with the beautiful skipper into the pin. He is going to have a four look. Yeah, a birdie on this is definitely ideal. Um, You don't want to take a bogey here. Really surprised to hear this plays over par. The course is so hard. It's just like in ball golf. You want to get your scoring done on the par fives. No question. And 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 really, this is a cool one as Macbeth almost flicks that T-Bird three in from the woods um, because Zach is in position for birdie and he went truth, explorer, enforcer. Wow. Kind, kind of, of the opposite. Yeah, playing backwards par yeah, five. I love that, though. It's super cool. Yeah, any multi-shot holes on a disc golf course where you're playing backwards is great. Yes, I totally agree. Uh, Feldberg there just kind of throwing that Cenus up a little bit further away, I think, than he'd like. We yep. were mentioning those soft, touchy shots 
really are the things that are impacted most when you're hurting. Yeah, exactly. Once again, Felberg just barely off. MJ gets a little nub, but still makes <laughs> it in. That's a wild par. I mean, he has gone. He went jungle to jungle to jungle to jungle. For sure. But I think a little par save like that might be what he needed to kick it back in gear. Oh, Feldberg. No. That's worst case scenario. You're hurt a little bit, uh, you short a putt, and now you have a longer putt. Yeah, that's just uh, disc golf go. being disc I golf. Know. It's a humbler, dude. <laughs> it I, knows when you're down, and it is sometimes it likes to kick you. It, it and it, the, the tricky thing is, it knows when you're up, and also likes to kick you. Then that's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man, I'm really uh, sad to see Macbeth not get up and down after almost throwing it in there. I know, and 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 he knew. I mean, there, there was a little bit of a lull in the energy through holes like. 10, 11, 12, 13, like we were real chatty in the beginning and then in the middle it just kind of got to that energy level and everybody just was like blah in this whole middle section. So I want to see these guys get the energy back up. Let's get to chit chatting. Let's start talking about free agency again. Let's get in the mood. <laughs> Let's get ready for yes. some birdies. Uh, now hold. this is not going to be an easy place to find a birdie though. I was just going to say a <laughs> hole 13, probably not that spot, especially for these guys. You know, none of them are throwing that big power flick. Um, you know, Zach obviously probably does have the advantage there uh, being the lefty, but at 400 feet, 399 uh, specifically, it's got to hold straight for a long time before breaking pretty extremely to the right. Absolutely. This is another one of those holes, one of the classic Jackson holes that got pushed back before Worlds. They just yep. pushed the, the pin back on top of this mound and made it really hard to get to unless you're Zach Milton. Yeah, that is so perfect. I believe that's an explorer. Um, but it just rode that flip up line nicely. That's that's what you want out of the flick. That's, that's not what you want. No. Yeah, it, it's really hard. Like you said, it's hard to get that forehand down there because it's a power forehand that can't ever flex. It can't ever be on an Anheuser angle. It has to be Heiser the whole way. Exactly. It's so tough. Like the second you get that right to left left action on the flick or or on you know any anything, it's it's. It ain't coming back. There's trees to hit. And not only that, on this hole, going uh, once you get the other action moving to left or right. Yes, it's even worse. Yeah, you're not going forward far enough. Yes. So, I like Feldberg with the roller play. I don't like the roller, like, real estate. What you're rolling over isn't great. But, I mean. I like the idea. I like though. the idea. Yeah. It's very hard to uh, access this pin with a you flip up backhand. Yes. I actually parked it with my insanity and it's the first time I've ever parked this hole Are you in this position. Yeah. Dude, Kevin Jones was playing with him, was touching the lock with a comet. What? Comet. See, that's some next level power and uh -huh. touch. I know. That Kevin Jones, that's a really good player. That's a really good player who is going to have some interesting times this off season, I think. Yeah, I can't wait to see where disc golf takes uh, Kevin Jones in the next couple of years. Yes. It's going to be really exciting to follow his journey. Paul and MJ there making minis. Firebird over the banger. Paul's got the creepiest stamp of all time on that Firebird, too. It's like the Michelin Man, but the face is worn off, so it's just this like ambiguous, puffy body. It's very strange. MJ was uncomfortable with it being on top of his desk. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Melton tapping in his birdie. Gosh, that's such a good stroke to get. Absolutely. You know, like you were saying earlier, um, a lot of courses are designed more for right-handed players, like to challenge, you know, when they think about a left turn hole or a right turn hole, they're still thinking about right-handed players when they design it. So being a lefty, you have to find your spots and execute. Hey guys, I'm Spencer with MVP, and I'm out at the course today to talk to you guys about the long-awaited Neutron Deflector. The Neutron Deflector is an extremely overstable mid-range, able to stand up to any headwind and any power. No matter the shot, count on the deflector's ability to fight out of a turn in order to flex and shape your line to get you to the basket. Alrighty, back to the action and a big shout out to specifically Spencer over there at MVP. Getting it done uh, on the media and in the beard game. Oh yeah, Spencer's beer game is on point. <laughs> uh, big shout out to them and the Deflector in general, their newest disc, so beefy. Um, hole 14, par five, again, you said it, one of the best features out here at WR Jackson are these long meandering par fives through the woods. This is so nasty on the first, second, and third shot. Um, is technically eagleable, um, but the only way you're gonna eagle it is if, 
I see. I think he's too far off to the right, even. Yeah, he's too far forward. He yes. went too far okay. off the tee. Yes. However, though, he does have the angle for a roller. Usually, the only time you're going to see this one get eagled or an eagle look is when someone throws a perfect tee shot and hits a huge roller. Yes, exactly. Uh, Macbeth there misfires off to left, and he's stringing together some pretty poor tee shots. Um, you know, not to not to gang up or anything, but the last two were un Macbeth like yeah this is a really difficult tee shot and uh, depending on what kind of actions going down on there at hole one sometimes it can be like extra distracting you yes. also have the entire practice area behind you this is the only tee that actually is in the practice area field it honestly feels like whole it feels like a tee for hole one it does you yeah. know what I mean you like when you're walking it. around yeah it, it for sure feels like the first tee um, having said that it's not and these guys are on the middle of the round so don't bother them but. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you see these guys who are down here kind of just scrambling up to get into the position um, to get up and down and get maybe a birdie or a par look. MJ, though, did make his way all the way up into that fairway. and That's going to be a super easy birdie. Yes. Like uh, You'll see us pan right there. He was in position to go for that big roller eagle, but you know MJ wants that birdie. Yep. <laughs> He's about that birdie life. Zach flicking... I feel like if position. you play this uh, course a fair bit of times, like you get in that position, you're going to go for the roller just because it's so few uh, that times actually, that you have that chance. Yes. Yeah. I it, went for it yesterday. I, I feel the same way about my home course in Golden Gate. If the second that they put hole 12, and this is a very local thing to say, the second they put hole 12 in C, you, I get like four chances a year to birdie that hole. Right. Like I am ripping it as four. I don't care about playing it safe. I never get to birdie it. It's funny how when you have an intimate relationship with a hole, it changes your perspective and sometimes skews like the smart way to play. Exactly, dude. It's just like, how many opportunities do I get this chance for this experience? I have to deal with that a little bit here at Jackson uh, because I've been playing it since they put it in over 10 years ago. But uh, not many of the holes are the exact same, although this is an OG. This is OG Th hole 10. Is it? It is. Wow, unchanged except the three, for the number plate. All three par fives are unchanged except for the number plate. Really? They, yeah. John Houck hit, Did it right, hit it right with those. Well, we hit it right with a lot of stuff. Oh, wow. Paul almost hits that 100 footer right. I've only seen an eagled once. And that would have been a sick birdie, though, right? Oh, yeah, after no, because he a bad tee shot. Can you imagine he junks, dunks that for four after the really first available off the tee? The only time you really see people uh, scramble to a par on this after hitting really early is when they kick hard left and then you play hole one's fairway and then throw an overhand Whoa. over the trees. That is some locally knowledge. Right I, well, I'd I've be lying if I hadn't had to do it at least five <laughs> or six times. It's kind of like that fake fairway on a hole eight, I think, or seven. Yep, there's yeah. a few fake fairways out here. Good birdie, though, by MJ. Really just playing it as it's designed. Throw to the uh, throw to the landing zone. Nice, easy backhand to the other landing zone. Putter into the other landing zone. Birdie. Yeah, you're forced to throw the driver off the tee here um, to get to the landing zone. But after that, if you are if you want to just you know poke along like MJ, yep. you can and get an easy birdie. Absolutely. Uh, MJ and Zach both getting fours. Uh, Feldberg and Paul, unfortunate fives. Um, 714 foot par four, hole 15 is so nasty, Matt. Like, I can't, I mean, okay, if I can throw 500 feet, I could figure out a way to birdie it because you just rip it on a turnover line over the little ravine and into a good spot, but there's no true line on that second shot man it's this one this hole feels weird to me and very weird because like for me it seems like it's too much for a par four like it's yeah. too hard to get the three but if you play with someone who throws far enough i played with drew gibson at world uh, last yes. year and he was throwing his putter like Down. 200 feet e to the basket exactly so it, it, it's a big arm par four where you still have to hit a gap. And if you do hit early, uh, you're going to have to scramble through a lot of trees coming down that second part of the fairway. It, it's honestly one of my favorite holes, not because it's like the most aesthetically beautiful, not because it films the best, not because people are going to ace it, but it's just like a challenge. Like it's, it's get a map out and start trailblazing because this hole is insanity. It's like up and down and through the woods and down this next set of woods and through these two trees. and The odds of two guys on the same card playing this hole through the same gap of trees yes. is slim to none. Exactly. That's kind of why I love it. It's it's crazy. We see Paul over here on this right side. We're just going to go right to left, kind of around the horn style. Like you were saying, uh, there's not really a true second shot fairy once you get to where Paul was. So he was kind of just hitting that first gap and then yep. turning the disc towards uh, the basket. That's all you could do, really. And so we have Paul with the turnover backhand. 
We've got Feldy with the roller second shot. I love it. Let's keep. I this. love rollers in the woods. I know, right? It's so fun. Keep this tracker going. We've got MJ backhand. All yeah, right. he's actually on the left side, so his disc, uh, his tee shot hit hyzer a little more yep. than he wanted, but you know. So we got backhand Annie, backhand roller, backhand hyzer, lefty flick roller. <laughs> yeah, late landing flick late roller. Late landing too. flick roller. We've really nearly the full gamut on our second shots here yeah that was that was a pretty fancy move by zach i'm not sure if he was going for the pin or just trying to get back in the middle um it looked like he laid down on a decent both. angle but there's so many like sticks and stumps in this fairway it's hard to get there exactly it's so unrealistic really to like from where he was think that you're gonna get up there and park it but i, I think it was probably bits of both like get up there and in the center somewhere and you're fine yeah, it looks like he got his shot up into that ditch behind the pin which will give you about uh just inside the circle's edge but mm -hmm. coming back the only friendly thing about this hole is that ditch that kind of stops you back there. I was just going to say, you can <laughs> rip it down there. Great putt, though, by Feldy. Oh, man. How many people do you think threw a backhand roller on this hole and got a birdie? I was just going to say, <laughs> I know. Like, crazy backhand and then backhand roller birdie. That's something. I love that Felberg is able to generate all kinds of different shots while still only throwing one shot. I know. He can do every shape out there he throws it backhand. one way but he can do a million things with it mm -hmm. the professor i know <laughs> I, we were talking a little bit uh about uh kind of back in the day and him hanging out with some people and the thought came up of getting him on joe rogan podcast i would kill to have feldberg on the joe rogan experience i think he'd be great dude. it would be like the elon musk like three yes. hour episode <laughs> you know, know feldberg could talk as Just long as you it want in, dude i love it I, we were, I was cracking up when that thought came up man he can dissect anything about the game anything he's so intelligent feldberg and Macbeth catching in there birdies zach and mj trailing with fourth um this is going to set it up we said it earlier in the program this is the easiest hole uh, on the course 297 foot par three the last new one however the fluke factor on this hole is heavy high heavy. very high so this is over here in old school turkey gulch mm -hmm. and uh you're actually throwing to the pin which is up on the old fairway of the last hole in turkey gulch you still have this ob creek on your right that's flagged off a lot less in the way though admittedly oh yeah definitely the yes. the problem with this hole or the issue is you have two fairways mm -hmm. and if you play the outside fairway it's way safer but harder to park although dave just succeeded in that mm -hmm. and then more likely you're gonna have guys play the inside fairway which has about three little trees just sprinkled yes. in it that you're not picking to miss on either side exactly you're just throwing it and hoping it misses. and if you hit that and kick right you're ob uh, so Paul was kind of saying the best shots I've thrown are nowhere close to the pin and the worst shots I've thrown are all parked. Exactly. Yeah. So MJ with the comment right here though, throwing the good shot and parking it. So it's possible. Oh yeah, it, it's doable. It really sets up better for a four, righty forehand player um, yes. because you can take the safe gap all the way up and then, and then crash in. Exactly. Yeah, and you're not going to be parked, but you'll have a putt. And I was trying to throw a flip up through the early gap at the sidearm. And I hit the tree that's 40 foot short every single time. Like, all my good shots would just drill that tree. And, you know, some could say that's a well-placed tree. Others could say that's the line I'm trying to throw. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I really missed the old hole 16. I thought that was a really good par 3. It had the OB danger on the left. But if you threw the pure line, it was going to be good. Yes. On this one, not so much. I love the old – I mean, I, yes. It doesn't the matter old how. 15, 16, 17, 18 was an incredible way to end your it round. It was a great stretch. Specifically, hole 15 is such a tragedy. You could eagle it, you could bogey it. It's. But. I do miss here 15. I played with Dave Felberg when he parked it uh, before. Are you serious? Yeah, 15. Oh my. And. Gosh. Yeah. It's great. Any hole where I'm playing like 250 foot shots to the basket and he's trying to park it, it's like you have some cool serious, options. Serious gainer. Yeah, but the thing is with that hole we just saw, 16, no matter how many trees you put in the way, under 300 feet, these guys are going to get it. Oh, no, exactly. It's, it is gettable. Um, here we are, 588 foot par four, hole 17. I'm going to go ahead and say it, the tightest gap off the tee on the course. Oh, 100%. Um, man, I was watching live scoring, and these guys were, there was like people getting birdies on this. Like a lot of people were getting birdies, yeah. and it blows my mind. I know. I think it's the hardest birdie to get on the entire property besides hole five. I completely agree. It, honestly, it kind of feels like hole five, uh, like the first shot of hole five. Yeah, you have to throw hole five's tee shot, park and then, it, and then get up there. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Now, I did see Drew Gibson at Worlds last year throw it uh, up straight up the fairway, Don't like 100 feet over the landing zone. It was 
sickening. Disgusting. Oh, my gosh. Well, that kid throws good, man. Oh, he throws so hard. It was like a stable disc, too. Oh, yeah. But he just like, cameras on, and it... Oh, yeah. It flew super flippy. Yeah. So this is the flippier version of that shot that I'm sure Drew just threw. Like, dead center up the middle, but it's a crank, and it's a swirly ESP one, so it just settles nicely in the landing zone. Yeah, I wasn't sure if MJ would uh, go crank or comet here. The gap is so tight that I played mid range right at the middle. Oh, flippy, really? Yeah, I played my flippy vector uh, right to the middle, but there's no chance of birdie. Yeah, no, no. That, at that point, you're just throwing for four. Yeah, you land right in the middle of the fairway, and there's this shot did not look that hard on camera. It's impossible. That is almost impossible. Now, what what disc would you say that you think that was? I mean, it has to be something with some stability, right? Mm -hmm. So, what do you have a, any uh, sort of AVR three or something? So close. That was a. C an X out, C G, D X, P A A. I don't know what any of that means, but X out color glow, <laughs> D X put and approach A V R. Wow, he's got incredible touch. I know. <laughs> he mandated that I remembered every single part of that and say it in commentary. You're welcome, Paul. I would have had to tattoo it on my arm <laughs> to remember know, that. I know. Write it on my hand with a sharpie. <laughs> exactly. I'm just gonna close my hand right now. <laughs> uh, no, these guys are all getting up though. Dave with the outside look at a birdie. Oh wow! <sighs> Sit down. All these hills. It's at. Yeah. It's all at. the baskets that play on hillsides. You know, you just never know if you if you have a good putt, you could roll. You need a great it. putt. Exactly. We saw MJ even on a flat surface rim off, 23 footer, and then he missed that one. So. You never know. It, it's almost like we're throwing little wheels out there. You know? <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> Shaped like a wheel and See, it rolls. See, that's why I opt for the square ones. Oh, yeah. The square discs are the way to go. Mm -hmm, my putt and approach is all square. Nice little tap in with the Halloween X out stamp. Yeah, tap in birdie here just feels so good. I know, dude. Sign me up. I couldn't even get within 100 feet of the birdie. Yeah, I say it feels good, but I wouldn't know. No, I, I know. Never it's never happened. From there. <laughs> I had heard rumor about people playing the right side gap on that, but it, I haven't seen anyone yet. I saw Eric Oakley practicing it. Um, I, you're right though. If there was, I think if there's one tree there that has some branches on it, that if that fell down, maybe in a hurricane right before the round, nobody would have noticed. Maybe just that one branch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people it would be really it. opens it up because they took that mando off that was there in years past. Uh, par five though, 726 foot ending hole. Such a good finishing hole. It's threeable. It's nineable. There's OB at the very bottom of the ravine. So get your first shot off clean. Yeah, I feel like guys see this hole as a super scoring hole. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, like, you don't see a lot of people go OB off this tee shot, but it can happen so easily. Oh, yes. Now, the biggest thing that happened this year uh, relative to years past. We lost a big tree. tree. Yeah, that big tree. You see it laying down in the middle of the fairway. It used to create uh, that left side was way tighter. Yes. So now if you want to play the left side, you have a little more room to start your hyzer flip to the left. So what MJ what MJ just threw was pretty much the only shot that you could throw. That big tree across. I mean, you could try and get testy with it. But from like a sensibility standpoint, oh, get up there. Just don't go out of bounds. Yes. Okay, it's sad. It's sad. Very good. You can get really hairy over there. So that kick basically took him over to the Steady Ed course. He's hanging yes. out hole 17 Steady Ed. Yep. So, yeah, this hyzer route used to be the preferred route. Um, but it's scary, too. I mean, you throw it good. You get down there and stand in that route. In that gap, and there's trees everywhere. Yeah, it's nothing. Like they they make that X, the leaning trees. It's really tough to hit the hyzer route. So now that that big tree is falling, you're gonna see a lot more left route. Yes, and that is just a great escape shot from Zach. Stand still. You got to get a lot of power on that just to even get it out of the trees, let alone up into the landing zone. Absolutely. One thing about this hole is if you do get off the fairway on your tee shot, as long as you're over that creek area, you kind of have a chance to try and put your, your second shot up near this gap, and then that'll give you a chance to maybe... I don't know what Dave's doing. Dude, did you see how far down that yeah, hill I'm, was? Yeah, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm in the middle of a sentence, and Dave's shot just blew my mind. That was that same disc that he threw on the the bending left to right par four that went What do you forever. think that is? I think it's like a trespass. I was about to say exactly. a trespass. I think, it's, I think it's like a trespass because it's got to be something that has some stability in it but is going to hold in its high speed. He threw one of the most incredible shots I've ever seen on hole two at USDGC's. The round he pulled out, we were playing together, and I said, Dave, what disc was that? And he said, it was a trespass. And I, I don't even think he used to throw those, but I think with the neck injury exactly. and having a little less pop, he's going to something a little flippier and getting some crazy angles out of it. I think you're exactly right. Zach here with his third shot after the incredible out. Taking the tight Ooh. gap. And he's in business. That's pretty incredible to have yeah. a look at the birdie after that tee shot. 
generally when you hit that early, it's going to just be a scramble to the par. But mm -hmm. Zach is, you know, excellent with that forehand. It's so important to have a forehand shot. Even like Dave is so good with every shot, but with the forehand, when you get off the fairway, that's when you need it. It's all about the release angle. You know, you can pitch out around trees, do all sorts of stuff like that. Exactly. Having bad footing and being able to yes. pitch around. So critical. There's Macbeth again with that X out CG. D X P A A. <laughs> Good luck on that, <laughs> so, bro. So silly. Super marketable name. I know, I know. We were talking about uh, Avery has uh, a list of all the modifiers you can put on the disc. Oh, MJ. And it's like literally note pa notebooks pages long. Just X out, puddle all top, on there. top da -da 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 -da, two line, three line. It's great. Zach Melton was probably the best birdie on hole 18 for the entire field. Yeah, I was just going to say, the, that had to be take the cake from the worst tee shot. To the best score. Yeah, you like, can only do that if you're lefty and have awesome hair. <laughs> That's just a fact. There you go. Nice birdie there to end the round by Paul. That's going to be four in a row to end. Uh, and that really takes a pretty mediocre round, three down through 14, uh, and, and puts him in contention. Yeah, the thing with courses like this where it's hard to score, you can, you know, a guy like Macbeth can kind of just pluck along the whole way and then at the end hit a bunch of birdies and boom, he's right there in right contention. In the mix. Yeah. Uh, we had really, I mean, the vibes on the card we weren't we were not thinking about score we right. were just chatting it up hanging out and all of a sudden it's like whoa Macbeth Melton seven down all right Johansson six and you look at the, the leaderboard it's like oh my god we have three guys in the top eight yeah those guys surged at the end of that yes. round and that's what you have to do you have to you know survive the short the new holes and thrive the end you're absolutely right uh, taking a look at our leaderboard we've got Ricky Wysocki hanging out in first place with that pretty hot at nine down that's that's doing work out here nine under is incredible uh johnny mccray was out there doing work too he was not able to birdie 18 which really? you would really think you're gonna do having a hot round like that or else we'd have a tie at the top yeah, of the absolutely leaderboard. i'll one up you though he eagled hole 12 oh my goodness he johnny i know it's people's dirty. champion <laughs> but paul mcbeth uh sneaking his way onto that lead card in a tie with eagle mcmahon Zach One of the highest-rated players in the world. They is true. Actually, technically tied, tied for, for the, the highest-rated highest player. We got both of them unreal. on the card. Actually, we have are both of them in the top four. Both of them are in the top four, and Ricky, who's in third place, all in that race with the forty thousand year old johnny mccray i don't know how he's still doing it at this level but he is you know in football they would just call him ageless i like that the ageless johnny mccray okay uh zach melton kevin jones mj and triple g greg barsby earning his way onto chase card talk about good vibes oh barsby is the man oh, i'm so excited i love it Alrighty, so that is going to finish up our round one coverage. Uh, next round, we are going to be joined by Kevin Jones in this rotating seat of co-commentary. Excited for that. But first, thanks so much, Matt, for joining. Hey, Corey, thank you very much. I love having you guys down in Georgia, and thank you for the awesome coverage. Dude, my pleasure. And tear it up rounds two and three. Let's get out of here.